is my Minecraft TV here, and today, I know, this has been like a month since I released my last 3.4 video, but Beta Flight 3.5 has come out, and the configurator just came out a couple days ago, so what we're going to go ahead and do is flash uh, Beta Flight 3.5, go over the new features, and then uh, just kind of show you the initial setup. So let's go ahead and dive in on the computer and see what 3.5 is all about. Alright guys, so we're on the computer and we have Betaflight Configurator 10.4.0 right here. So that's the first thing you're going to need to flash and use Betaflight 3.5. So to get here, what you want to go ahead and do is go to Betaflight and Google Betaflight Configurator. Click on that. Go to the GitHub right here. And then just download one of these that's for your computer and then will install Betaflight Configurator 10.4.0. So once you have that installed and done, you can get out of that. You also want to go ahead and do, if this is your first time installing Betaflight, make sure you have these three drivers right here so then your computer will recognize the flight controller. So if you, your computer doesn't recognize your flight controller, try downloading these three drivers first. And once you have those installed, what we can go ahead and do is flash beta flight 3.5 so another thing you also want to probably want to download too if you don't have it, it makes it easier to flash is impulse rc driver fixer so i'm going to go ahead and load that up and search it's searching for a flight controller right now so i'm just going to plug in my flight controller it's entering bootloader mode and installing the DFU drivers. And then just say success. All right, so it's done. And now on the top right, we have DFU mode. So what I'm going to do is click on, make sure you have unstable releases always on, but I believe 3.5 is now an official release. One more thing too, before I forget, connect to your flight controller. Actually, connect to your flight controller and go into CLI and click on versions and go in, and just type in version and it should tell you which um, firmware here that you're using to flash with. So I know I'm using a DYSF4 Pro. So I'm going to click on that and then we're going to use Betaflight 3.5 and then we're going to go ahead and click load firmware and then flash the firmware. And I already actually installed Betaflight 3.5 already on here just to save some time on the video. But once this is done flashing, you can go ahead and get to the next step. So what I'm going to do is unconnect my flight controller, reconnect it up. And we're going to go to the welcome screen. And this is Betaflight 3.50 and configurator 10.4.0. So the first thing things you want to go ahead and do is set up your receiver. And I know mine's on UART 3, so you set that to receive here. If you're using smart audio or telemetry, make sure you have that on the right UART that you're using and just click those corresponding ones. Then and make sure you hit save and then it'll reboot the board. Now I am using Wraith 32-bit ESC, so I do have DSHOT 1200 selected. Uh, if you're using Heli S, it's probably going to be DSHOT 600 or 300. And then if you're bored, if you need to line your boards right there. And then update your gyro loop and your PID loop. I'm doing the maximum on the DYSF4, which is AKAK. -AK. I do disable my accelerometer since I only fly in acro mode. And then I have a crossfire receiver on here, so I'm using a serial based receiver, and then I have crossfire selected. It'd be up to you if you're using Fry Sky, you'll still use this, but you'll just hit the S bus part, wherever S bus is. S bus, right there. Once you're done with that and you reboot the board, come down to the bottom section here. Then we have air mode. I always fly with air mode on, it comes off. Of beta flight 3.5, I selected it. Any gravity and dynamic filter are on by default. 
And this would be a good time to talk about anti-gravity and dynamic filter. Since Betaflight 3.5 came out, they actually improved both of them. And you can actually adjust your dynamic filter by going into, I believe, the CLI tab and setting the perimeters you want for your dynamic filter. You can either make it wider, you can make it narrower, you can tell it what uh, hertz that you want to um, filter the settings at, because now it can actually get more motor noise in the actual filtering, which is good because that's mostly the vibrations and stuff are coming from the motors. Another good thing too, they, they change the dynamic filter. Now it actually comes after the low pass filters. Before, I believe it was first. It was kind of uh, made some messy things. I mean, it, it was probably one of the main reasons for some people with hot motors. So Betaflight 3.5 does fix some of that those issues. And in gravity now, instead of it going off your stick with how fast you're flicking your stick up and down, now it's always on and it's pretty much progressive. The more you put your stick up or down, the more eye gain is going to boost to prevent your yaw and uh, not your yaw, but your pitch and your roll from going up and down and moving around when you do punch outs. So they improved that with Betaflight 3.5. And D-Shot Beacon, if you want your motors to beep instead of having a beeper on your quad, uh, hit re RX set, and that will actually make your motors beep instead of a beeper beep. So if you don't want to put a beeper on your quad, you can use your motors to beep. All this stuff I leave on, it's up to you what you want to beep or not to beep. And then when you're done, hit save and reboot. Power and battery, I didn't really mess with stuff, but if you like to use your beepers and stuff, then this is where you would set your battery voltage. Now the pit tuning section is the one that got the most um, change here in Betaflight 3 uh, 10.4 configurator. Now instead of uh, D-term transition and D-term set point weight, we now have feed forward and we also have feed forward transition. So before we used to tune our quads by kind of getting the bounces out and all that stuff. Well, you probably would tune that out using feed forward and also feed forward transition instead of now using the PI and D. PI and D are going to be now used probably most likely for getting uh, oscillations out of your quad and all that stuff. So if you want your quad, you know, usually you raise P up as much as you can, then you try to get D up to get all the oscillations out. Now what you want to do, instead of really messing with the PI and D that much, Start messing with feed forward and boosting that up to get that transition. Pretty much what it's going to be doing is the same thing as D term transition, but now it's separate from the PID loop. So what you want to do is if you take your stick and you put it all the way to the right, well, your quads are going to respond to that. And this is increasing this will make it go faster to that set point degree. So I have a thousand degrees a second. So if I have it all the way to the right, it's going to want to try to get to a thousand degrees a second as fast as it can, as more you increase this value. At default values right now, it's more linear and I kind of preferred it linear. That's how I like to fly. Um, but then the feed forward transition is kind of like adding expo to that. So if you uh, don't want to have it more linear because this will increase it, you can go ahead and get more uh, expo in the center of your stick for that. Now if you like to hold your quad flu in 3.4 and 3.3 because you had everything uh, tuned correctly with the set point transition and all that, there is, if you go in the GitHub, they do have a formula you can go ahead and put in there and it will give spit out and let you know what to set this as and what to set this as. Um, now instead of having in the CLI um, adding the I term relax, now you can do it right here which I have it checked off. And you also have VBAT PID compensation where if you have your battery dropping down in voltage, it will increase your PI and Ds to compensate for the lower battery voltage or lower them considering if what you're running 6S, 4S, I believe. See right here, you can also change your anti-gravity. So if you didn't like how they had the always on anti-gravity, you can actually change it to step. And that's how you would do it. But right now, let's go ahead and do smooth. I want to try out, see how it feels. And everything else is about the same here. So then when you're done with here, you hit save. And these are already, put your rates in there. If these 
these are the rates I use, so whatever rates you want to use, put that there. Filter settings, nothing to really change here initially. Uh, all the notch filters are off. Now they're using all low pass filters, just like in Betaflight 3.4. So nothing has changed here with initial setup. The receiver tab, same thing as Betaflight 3.4. Here now, if you noticed, now you can, instead of using the CLI to do RC smoothing, you can do filter, interpolation, and all that stuff right here, which is really nice instead of messing with the CLI. Another thing I've been asked a lot of questions, how do you get your RSSI on your OSD? Well, what you have to go ahead and do is set up your channel. On Crossfire, you just set up your channel 12, I believe it's channel 12, to um, LQ quality. And then it's technically on channel 8 because it you got to subtract 4 for the pitch roll and yaw and throttle. And then you just hit aux 8 and then you'll have your RSSI on your OSD. So once that is all done, hit save and reboot it. Or no, save, don't have to reboot it. You have our modes tabs and that's where you set up your modes and your on your switches on your Tyrannus, which I do have a video on setting switches up. And... You have your OSD section, the same thing as Betaflight 3.4 and 3.3. But I think that should be about it for Betaflight 3.5. If you found this video useful, give it a like. Um, if you haven't already, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in another video. I appreciate you guys watching. Peace.